Welcome to my talk. Um, so we're going to talk about connecting devices with GameKit. Um, who, he, who here has ever used GameKit before? That's pretty cool. Um, who knows what it can do? Yep. All right. Okay. Who can? Who doesn't know what it does, but thinks it's something to do with games? All right. That's cool. Um, in actual fact, up until iOS 4.1, it didn't do much to do with games. But with 4.1, they got Game Center included. But before then, it was like a misleading name, you can say. <laughs> so, um, so this is what GameKit basically does. It takes care of, on at least for iPhone devices and iPads, it um, it provides Game Center, which is basically the whole authenticating, um, matching, and everything for ga for games, and also provides the older functionality, which is the P2P connectivity, and the in-game voice. So, what that basically means is you can use the P2P connectivity in your own app to send data from one, you know, it could be a game, it could be anything. Or you could use the in-game voice to use Apple's framework for voice. Um, yeah, cool. So this is basically what it does. It, you know, provides peer pickers and all the stuff. It makes it really simple. You see, like today what I was planning on doing was using everything but GameKit. Oh, sorry, um, Game Center. So we'll be setting up a Bluetooth connection between two devices. You guys can join in as well. It's roughly 80 lines, so it's pretty simple. And um, we'll also we'll set up a voice chat service where even your app could talk to my app. So if you want to you know, barge in, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, so we'll give that a go. So yeah, we'll be using Bluetooth, phones, iPads. You can get them all ready. For, you can do it in the simulator, but um, at least a month ago when I was testing on 4.0, it used to crash every um, 20 seconds or something. So you only get like 20 seconds of audio streaming for some reason. But apart from that, it works just fine on the simulator as well. So we'll give it a go. If you guys want to just, you know, whip out your laptops. Cool. Demo time. <laughs> Let's get straight into it. <clears throat> okay, so what we'll do is we'll start by creating a new f new project in Xcode. We'll just make it. I don't want to do any interface builder stuff, so we'll just make it a simple view-based application. It's literally going to be like you know a white screen, just knowing that it works, sort of. Okay, um, we'll call it uh, DW twenty ten. All right, so um, I should push this aside. This is our little cue cards on the side. Okay, so just like any other, you know, um, Apple framework, you have to start by adding it to your project. So you know, you just go to frameworks, you right click, it will do um, existing framework, and you would just choose um, Game Kit. So you can type G A M E, and it should come up. So then you should also see it just here on the left. Should just show up, kind of. That's pretty much as big as you guys need it. Anyway. <laughs> um, so in the view controller, we don't need anything. So I'm just going to get rid of everything except for the dialog. And we'll start. Uh, so we've done that. Now, do do. Okay. So um, one of the things that GameKit uh, that GameKit provides is a uh, peer picker. Which is only used in um, in Bluetooth mode. So, if you want to connect two devices using Wi-Fi, you don't use what we're about to use now. But there are other ways of doing it. I'll explain that a little bit later. So, I'll just add a view did load. So, void view did load, and we'll add a GK, um, GameKit peer picker controller. Ah, oh, whoops. Oh, you got to add the header file, by the way. So, hash import. So that that line there on line nine is the one that you want to add for the import. So, um, game kit peer. 
Uh, wait, let me try that again. Save. Mm. Peer picker controller. And just, you know, picker is equal to game kit peer picker. Uh, how do I turn word wrap on? Pick controller, um, a lock, and in it. So, no fancy constructor, just a simple allocation. And just to you know, respect the memory gods, just free it up when we're done. So, pick a release. Okay, so, um, well, simplest thing you know, you want to show the picker, so you just do picker show. Let's just try oh, what the hell? Let's try running this. You can just run the simulator for now, we don't need the device. If all goes well, it will run. So there you go, it worked. <coughs> but um so it's not gonna do anything now. To find out later why not. But um so um, one of the things that the picker actually needs is a delegate. So the picker, you know, the whole observer pattern, the picker tells you, I'm done picking, I'm done this, I'm done that. So let's just set the picker for the game, for the, set the, sorry, I'm lost. Set the delegate for the picker. So just do picker.delegate is equal to self. I'm just being lazy here, but in a properly designed app, you wouldn't need to do that. Oh, you could, but whatever. Um, and then add it to the header file as well. So game kit peer peer pick control delegate. Just, am I going too fast? Is everyone, you know, struggling to keep up? Can you make it wider? Wider? Okay. Okay. Uh, I can't want to use my little notes. Okay. That better? Yeah. Slow down. Okay. So this is in the header. Just add this. Oh, you're gonna need the thing as well. Hash import game kit. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm just gonna move on. That's all right. Uh, so you don't need this one anymore. Okay. So that works. Now. Um, for the delegate, we need to actually implement a bunch of methods. So it ha it requires, where is it? Oh, yeah. Um, for the sake of this presentation, we're going to implement this one method called session for connection type. You don't have to do it in your app, but I'm doing it here so that we can actually make our, our different apps communicate if we need to. You, know, you can communicate with my demonstration app. So um, there's session for connection type. So I'll just find that here. This one. Um, okay, so just I'll add that in here. Okay, so what this basically says is, um, what the game kit session is, it's used to connect, uh, to provide the interface with you and um, any other um, device. So the game kit session in essentially provides things like sending data, receiving data, you know, send data, and also there's a, you can also provide a handle for who should receive the data, kind of. So um, with, the del with the session, what we're going to do is we're going to create a session which everyone's going to have the same one. So just to return um, game kit session Oops, alloc init. That's meant to be something else. Okay. There you go. So you need the init with session ID, sorry. 
that's well, autocomplete was working. So for the session ID, just for the sake of today, we'll just use cap two WD two oh one oh. So as long as your session ID is unique for all the for for all your apps, it's fine. Like if you want to have a particular session ID for only a particular subset of your application users, this is where you would set it up. Um, the display name would would is actually how it what what your device would be identified as. It, if you just provide the nil, it falls back to whatever iTunes has it as kind of. And the mode um, there's actually three modes. So there's game kit session mode. So there's peer, client, and server. Um, cl server is only you, is so ba basically server is where you're listening for connection and and client is where you're sending out connections. Whereas P is where it's doing both at the same time. What that basically just means is it's a bit slower in peer mode, but it's easy to implement. <laughs> so we'll just stick with peer. Okay. So there you guys catch up with that. Ah, I wasn't meant to show the picker yet, but there you go. We have a picker anyway. <laughs> so let's just try running it. Um, I have a bit of a sample running here as well. Uh, also, make sure your Bluetooth is on. This seems to be some sort of weird bug in um, OS X. It doesn't seem to ask you to turn it on, so I'll just try that again. Oh, if all goes to plan, it should work. Or I've got my iPad. It's trying to find it as well. <laughs> uh, has anyone got it running, like on their simulator? No. Okay. Um, well, it should be working. Well, basically, what happens is anything like if I just okay cancel word. With some, uh, if, as soon as it finds a device, it would actually crash at this point because, um, well, I planned it to crash. Uh, the, what actually does it? It calls back your delegate saying that uh, we have connected to this particular peer. And it calls this particular method in your delegate, did connect to peer. So it, why does it actually do that? Um, it does it because you, you don't have to connect to one device. For us, we're just using a single device. But um, the framework actually allows, I think, six or seven devices, which is pretty cool. <coughs> oh, I think it's four. I can't remember. It's somewhere in the documentation. So if we just get that method out of it. Did connect to. There you go. Okay. Okay. So um, at this point, what we we'll do is we we'll just basic. It gives you the the the, the game kit session again. I could have stored it earlier, but I'll just I'll store it here for the sake of doing it. So I'll just create a, a variable here. Um, game kit session. And I'll make it a property. Can everyone see, by the way? Is that big enough? Right. Yeah? OK. So we'll just add that. I oh, probably should do this. That might be a bit better. No, oh, no. Too confusing. I'm closing that. OK. And then just whoop, add the synthesize as well while we add it. And the release self dot that is equal to nil. All right, so is everyone following? And did I lose anyone there? I think you got lost. Um, how much did you guys get? <laughs> when I got to the head of file, oh. Well, you're jumping quite a bit, like between the end of the main. Oh, okay. Like, as soon as you finish. 
So just basically adding a game grid session to the header. Split view? OK. All right, is that better? Yeah, the, 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 the head is, oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> there you go, the head is on top. Okay, um, I don't remember what to do now. Um, I'll run the device a bit later, but it will actually run now. So the, where, the, where we brought the app up to at this point is you can actually now start sending data to um, any other look if you don't want to implement voice this is where you stop in terms of the setting up so now you can just basically at any point say you want to um, you had like you know void oops volatile void view did appear so you had a view did appear method you could actually at this point just do session okay it's not a good example but oh wait game session So you can pretty much call the send data method at this point for your application. <coughs> so that does also mean you have to design your own protocol, like you know your own way of talking. So it doesn't really matter, but it, it's up to you how you do it, really. Um, yeah, you don't need that. I'm getting rid of that. Okay, so now to add voice to our program, it's pr ooh we're doing really well with time. Okay. I could slow down a lot more, actually. OK, oh, yeah, that's it. What is it? It's the connection. Um, OK, so the one of the things that the GameKit session actually lets you do is set up a data receive handler. Um, it's, it's kind of unconventional. You know, they usually have protocols and everything for receiving data, but they don't do it here. They just use, like, specify a handler. So what we'll do is um, at at this point, oh, wait, sorry, here, do session set data receive handler. We'll just set it to self. And we'll implement the particular select ourselves. So in the context is basically if you want um, the session to tell you, you know, return a particular thing back to you. That's what the context is for. So we don't need anything, just do nil. Okay, um, just, let me just find out what the handler's per signature is. So it's this one. If you just option click it, you get the um, signature for it. Okay, and then what we'll do is, oh yeah, we'll, we'll leave that there for a second. We'll come back to that a bit later. Okay, so now what we'll do, what we'll do is we'll create our voice chat service. So this will, Apple provides, the, the service that Apple provides only allows single device, to, like one-to-one one -one connections. It doesn't provide many-to-many, -many, which is kind of annoying, but doesn't really matter. Um, Another thing it does is it lets you do it over the internet, apparently, which I haven't been able to get it working, but you can do it. So you don't have to technically do it from um, using Bluetooth or using um, local LAN Wi-Fi, sort of. OK, so I'll create the uh, voice chat service. Um, did connect, OK. Which I'll create up here in the view did load. So game, oh, oops. We'll, in the header, we'll go to create a game kit voice chat service. Game kit voice chat service. Uh, chat service. So I'm not being very creative with my variable names here. And we'll do this again. Whoops.
and also add the synthesize in your implementation file. So with the chat service, what we'll just do um, game kit voice chat service add lock init. So that's literally all we need to do at this point. So after our you know our peer picker has you know connected our two devices together, we want um, allowing for each device to you know do whatever it wants in terms of synchronization. One might be slower than the other. We'll in our did connect to peer. We'll tell the voice chat service to connect to the particular um, to the particular device. Sorry, sorry, yeah, to connect to that particular peer. So what we'll do is um, voice chat. Oh, wait, what did I call it? Oh, chat service. Um, start voice chat with participant ID. So now I suppose the real question is what is participant ID? <laughs> okay, um, another thing that voice chat lets you do, I just realized I made a mistake, sorry. Um, we should have moved, the, just move this um, chat service initializer down below here. Sorry, um, because in terms of the participant ID, you need to initialize it. And what we're going to do is we're going to initialize it based on whatever um, the session says it is, the game kit session. So we also need to do chat service dot delegate. Uh, wait, what's it called? Okay, um, if I remember remember correctly, chat service dot client. Yep. So you just set the client to yourself, and you have to implement the protocol as well in the header file. So game kit, uh, game kit, voice chat so client. There you go. Nice and handy. So is everyone following? Let's make sure I haven't killed the compile. Well, there is a compiler problem. Oh, yeah, I have to fill that in. Okay. Um, yeah, I need to I need to fix that. I'll change that in a second. Uh, oh yeah, and to, for the participant ID, we'll do it did connect to this particular peer, so to change the peer ID. Okay. You want to start? Your function, your message uh, stop voice chat. Oh, you're right, you're right. Yes. Uh, and you need an error as well. You're right. Ah, wait, let me kind of start that again. I don't like it when autocomplete fails. Start voice chat with peer ID error. I'm being lazy, so I'm not going to have an error, so I'll just do nil. Okay? Okay, that should work now. Hey, there's warnings. I don't know what they are, but there are warnings. I'll have a look at them a bit later. Okay, so what we need to do now is we have to implement the required methods for the um, voice chat service client thingy. So we'll see what that has to ask us to implement. So there's these two, where you set, specify the participant ID, which I was talking about a little earlier, and a, a method that basically is a callback <coughs> to this client to send data. So we'll do this. We'll go, on, I should add a little divider. Voice chat client. Oh, by the way, you don't have to write this line for people who don't know what it is. Just ignore it. Um, okay.
Okay, so this this method will be called by the chat service when it wants you to send data to the other user. So what that basically means is we have to tell our session to send the data. You know, just another level of redirect indirection. So we'll just do um, game session send data. So the data that's sent into this method to oops wait uh, let's do that again sorry wait not send data send data to all peers. There's two methods, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to store the PID. So it's data with mode, um, we just we send it reliably, since there's nothing to lose. Game kit, oh, it's a game kit send data. Game, game kit send data reliable. And error, being lazy again, just do nil. You know, we're just assuming it all work. <coughs> For the participant ID, we'll just use whatever the um, the Bluetooth game chat, uh, the game kit session using. So we'll just to return game session dot client. Oh wait, um, peer ID. Okay, so it just returns your peer ID. Okay, that should be working. There you go. You should be having zero compiler problems at this point. Is everyone following? <laughs> okay, I can hear the fingers all tapping away like <laughs> Okay, um there's still one more thing we need to do actually. I'm just I can't remember what, what the function is. Uh da, 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 da. from Bluetooth. Oh yeah. Oh, so this this method it's it redirects from the voice chat to to the Bluetooth, but we need to also have the Bluetooth to the voice chat, so the other direction. So that's what this method here is, the one that we skipped over a bit earlier. So what we'll do here is we'll do our chat service. Did uh, wait. received I uh, received data. So data from participant ID here. Yeah. Okay, and that should work. That's literally all you need to do. You got less than eighty less than eighty lines right there. Assume you haven't forgotten. Oh wait, there's one more thing I have forgotten that I think. There, yeah, I'm forgetting two things. That's why it's less than eighty lines. Sorry. Two required methods, we did that. Yes. So the voice chat client has one more method which you need to implement, which is basically, you know, your phone's ringing, do you want to pick it up or not, sort of. Which is this method here. Did receive invitation from participant ID. So we'll implement this one as well. Um, okay, so what we'll do is we'll be, we're being lazy. We'll just accept whatever calls come in. So we told the voice chat service, the voice that was passed in. You could use the the local variable, but whatever. Um, voice chat service accept call, and the call ID is passed to the function as well. So just do call ID. Error. We don't really care as usual. Oh, not as usual. Whatever. So that's that. And I think there's one more line we need up here somewhere. In, oh, no, that's it, actually. Assuming I've done it right, it should work. I will test it out.
So I use my iPhone, my iPad. Oh, okay. I'll see if it works on the simulator. It really should be working. It was working before. seem to want to work okay just leave it at device for now it's the way it worked <coughs> earlier maybe there's something wrong maybe I missed something hope not um, is anyone deploying to device by any chance It'd be more fun that way for some yeah the received data as in which one oh um, what, you mean this one, or? Uh, Where did I get this from? OK. Um, put this down. So th this function is basically defined when you set the data receive handler for the ses session. So you can tell the session, tell this particular fun uh, tell this object when you receive any data. So you can pass it around easier. So in that sense, what you just do is, oh, the, what I did, I just went to the documentation, and it's defined here, <coughs> receive data. OK. It's not working. It should be working. Um, anyone need any other lines while I forensically debug this? No? OK. OK, wait. Let me just see if everything's been called. Send data. So you're finding um, DW 2010. Whoops, I spelled it wrong. That's why it's not finding it. Sorry, sorry. That'll work now. But, um, if you guys type WD 2010 like me, then it won't work, kind of. Oh, it will work. As in for this, um, in it with session ID, that function, just, I typed it wrong. That's why it's not working for me. And suddenly it is working. Like. Yeah. See, um, the phone came up. I'll just tap that. And then it will come up automatically on my iPhone. Wait a second. Do, 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 do. There you go. It comes up, and then you basically just accept it. And. A lines, and you can. Blah. Yeah. So if you guys get it running, then you can also get it doing this. Wait. Now the simulator should also work. Has anyone um, caught up? Like, anyone need any help? The received data? Yep. Uh, yep. So you basically just redirect it to the chat service.
anyone need any other lines? Should just work for you guys. Scroll up. Oh, which function? That's it? Okay. It doesn't like me right now. It was working before. In the same data, at least. Okay, well, um, since we have time, I'll just explain some of the other smaller things. Oh, yeah? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna put it up. Yeah, it'll be easier. I was gonna put it up somewhere eventually. Yeah. Um, anyone else copying lines? Still? Yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the things you you probably could implement yourself if you wanted to do it purely Wi-Fi based. In the game kit session, which we have here, it has a bunch of calls which you can make for. Can everyone see that? Can I make that bigger? There you go. Um, oh yeah. So you can set, so with the game kit session, you have to you can find other peers. So this is how you would do it using um, Wi-Fi. So it's pretty cool at work when I was showing them this. So, um, one of the guys who went to the other side of the building and we're like. Talking like, oh, what do you want from the fridge? He's like, oh, I want this. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, so you can find other people on Wi-Fi. It's, but then the whole thing is the UI picker, the this thingy that we have here, this isn't given to you. It used to be apparently, and then got rid of it a while ago. So you have to implement your own table or, you know, just make it really simple where it doesn't even ask the user. It just automatically connects. I think there's an app on the App Store which does that. Um, that's one of the things it does. And if you do go, like, don't you, if you decide to not use a picker, which is a, this thing here, then there's these other functions which you have to also implement, kind of like accepting, denying, and stuff like that. Okay? Well, finished a bit early here. Um, anyone have any questions? Oh, just something I just stumbled onto a few weeks back. I was like, I can see if it, I, I actually I didn't start off doing this. I I was in a I was in a meeting and I got a message on my phone. My phone's a 3G and it's really slow. So I was like, oh, I don't want to reply to the SMS on my phone. <laughs> I'm like, what if I could type it up on my iPad and send it to my phone? My phone could send it. Like, ah, but if I try doing that, then I'm like, okay. So I looked into the framework and then that's how I found out about the whole audio thingy. But um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You can do anything you want with it, really. Well, one thing I did notice, if you try sending a, so it's probably my fault, if you serialize a, uh, you guys, have you guys all heard of um, NS coding? It's quite popular. If you serialize it on, say, an iPad uh, 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 object, and you send it to an iPhone, and at that time, one was running 4.0, one was running 3.2, some reason it decides to crap out when it's rebuilding the object. I had no idea why, so I had to go down lower and you know go back to C strings and UTF-8 encoding style and everything. But pretty interesting. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's something that you you don't see in many apps on the App Store, but it could easily be implemented. Like even though I do have a U UI which is given by Apple and it might be intimidating some users, but if you do implement it using Wi-Fi, you can literally have no no GUI. It just it'll connect just like that, sort of, you know. Any other questions? Not really? Hang on. I think I have a slide left. Ah. Yes. So there you go. You can find me on Twitter, Sushified. Or my very interestingly named geeky blog, which is dead during exam time and assignment time. So 